without any further ado, I want to bring up our next uh, industry leader who was here earlier. Um, but and was also uh, bragged on uh, in terms of her organization really doing some outstanding work. And that is Paula Jackson, who's the president and CEO for the American Association of Blacks in Energy, having been named in that position uh, since uh, 2013. Ms. Jackson's experience includes 15 years in the energy industry for both electric and natural gas distribution companies. Abe is a nonprofit professional organization whose focus is to ensure that African Americans and other uh, people of color, as well as women, have input into the decisions and the development of energy policy regulations and the environmental issues that we are all uh, very also involved in and, um, and responsible for promoting. So again, without any further ado, let us bring our hands together for the most beautiful uh, energy executive, I think, in the room, <laughs> and that is Paula Jackson. And thank you for that. When we were, Tom and I were sitting here and he said, what are you going to say? And I said, well, it depends on what you say. And depending on what you say, I might just say what he said. <laughs> so I'm going to start by saying what he said and what Sandra said so that, you know, I really do appreciate um, being here. And, and I thank you for reading the mission, of, mission statement for the organization because I always think it's important for people to understand who we are as an association and what our focus is. And so while our mission is focused around policy and its impacts on communities of color and other, others, the way we do that is by increasing the participation in this industry. Um, and so uh, Congressman Rush's bill was obviously an easy, a big softball in terms of how do you, do you support it or not. Um, and, and I said to him, you know, thank you for making my job a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, I think that this industry is incredibly dynamic and innovative and interesting and fun. Um, but what I have found amongst my membership and, and outside of my membership is that very few people choose it. People kind of fall into it. So for me, my first job was at a gas company that was two blocks from my house and I never knew it existed. And when they hired me, I had no idea what they did. And when someone told me, well, that's how the stove, you cook with gas on your stove, I was baffled by that. And I had a college education and all this other stuff. And I was like, really? That's what they do at the gas company? Um, and so it is, it is through that, that experience that I started to understand that this was an industry that I was interested in. But I don't think that my experience is really unique. And so what I think bills like this do and what our organizations collectively try to do is to create a pathway by informing people that there is an opportunity here. There is an opportunity that moves you into the middle class if that's what you desire. There is an opportunity to have not just a great job, but a long-standing career, whether you decide to go to college or not. Um, it is an industry that touches every single person in multiple ways throughout their lives. And we all kind of take it for granted. Um, we just expect it to be there. And Tom hears from us when it's <laughs> not. Um, but it, it is an industry that I think really gives an opportunity for a really vibrant kind of life if that's what you want. Um, I'm going to share a story with you because you are STEM for us. And I, I was not a STEM student, but I really do appreciate the importance of it. Um, and when I started my career for about two weeks, I decided to follow the operational guys because I was in the office. So I didn't really understand what the welders did and the guys in the street did and the guys who mapped and field techs. And so one day I'm out there with the street guys. And, you know, these guys have been around for 35, 40 years, um, and they always like to comment how we young college students thought we were so smart, and we didn't really know anything. You just think you're so smart because you got that little degree. Um, and so they had a pipe that they were trying to replace, and the um, measurements were off. And so now we got to figure out what's the measure right measurement for this pipe. And so the welder looks at me and he goes, now see this, Paula, that tech's going to run over there to that car and go on that computer and put in all these numbers so he can come back and tell me what the right answer is. And he takes out a very small piece of paper and does a simple calculation and hands me the piece of paper and he says, now I bet you that when he comes back, the number he gives you is a number that's on this paper. And it was the same number. <laughs> and I was like, well, how did you know that? And he's like, that's basic trigonometry. <laughs> and the first thing I thought is, that's what you use trigonometry? <laughs> um, but I think it also, it's an industry that I think for a lot of students, what you're doing day to day in your simple basic mathematics classes 
transfer, right? And, and any teacher will tell you that most students say, why am I studying that? I don't need that stuff. But you do actually need it. And that was the example for me that I was like, oh, he's like, it's just a sign of this number. That's all you had to do. And your parents paid all that money for college for what? I just got, you know, such and such and so. So I think it was, it's a, a great example of what this industry can do and the opportunities that we have as an industry to not only bring people in, but to inform students about how what they're learning on a day-to-day -day basis actually really matters. It counts for something. It's not a waste of your time. We, as an industry, can do that very easily by bringing those kinds of people into the classroom and showing those very simple demonstrations. And it's a unique place for us. The other thing, um, you know, we, I, I, diversity, I often tell people that selling people on diversity is not what I have to do. But Tom alluded to the fact that you have 40% of employees who are ready to retire, and you said five years. And we know that in 10 years, if not sooner, we are going to be a majority minority population. And so part of this just makes sense, right? If you don't diversify your workforce, exactly who are you prepared to hire? Um, and so it is kind of the perfect storm. All of this stuff is coming <coughs> together. And I think it's just you know commendable that we have legislators, as well as industry, as well as civil rights organizations, as well as civic-minded people, as well, as well as trade associations, who all kind of agree on this point. And so I thank you, Talib, for your leadership in bringing us together and recognizing their leadership. Um, and I also really thank all of you for being here and look forward to finding ways that we can connect and work together to make this stuff happen. Thank you.